Hi everyone, it's Lauren Peterson and I'm from the Deseret Ward and I recently got back from my mission to Orlando, Florida, Spanish speaking. And it has been, I think about a month since I've been home, which is absolutely crazy. I can't believe it's been that long, but I loved my mission. It was probably the most fun I'd had, it, I've ever had. It was so fun to just be taken out of my comfort zone and, and learn to how, to how to speak to other people and how to um, become friends with people I wouldn't think I'd be friends with. And it was definitely the coolest thing I could have done. And I made some of my best friends on my mission, all of my companions became some of my best friends and I talked to them almost every week for when they're on their P days and stuff. And it's been so fun to talk to the people that um, I taught while I was there on my mission and, and the people that were baptized there. And it, it was an amazing experience and I miss it so much, but it's good to be back. Good to be back with the family and hopefully I'll be able to see you guys all soon. But, um, yeah, so Orlando, Florida, it was a very fun place. It, the Florida man is real. I will tell you that there are some very crazy people in Florida, but, um, and Disney world and my first area, I only served in three areas on my mission and I, my first area I was there for seven and a half months. And it was really cool because we were, Disney World was right in our area. So we would go and knock on some complexes that were right down the street from Disney World. And you could see the, the top of the castle and you could see the top of Space Mountain, which was so fun. It, I wish we could have gone, but it's okay. I'll get there eventually. Um, but it was really cool. And I was able to serve right, right around the campus UCF and meet a lot of young students and just be able to just meet new people that I didn't think I'd meet before. And, and it was really cool to see how me and my companions or other missionaries were placed in certain spots just because we were meant to meet certain people. And it was it was an amazing, amazing time to grow and to strengthen my relationship with my Savior and um, strengthen my testimony because I learned a lot about the importance of the gospel while I was there. Um, and the food. I could give an entire 10 minute talk on the food. I kid you not, it was so good. Hispanics make some dang good food. But um, it, yeah, it was so good. And I'm so grateful. There is one street where, um, it was my, in my last area. And there's this one street that's right on the way to the church. So we go to the church all the time. So we had to make a pit stop at every single little place, but there is a food truck on like every side. It was just so good. Oh man. Okay. I need to stop talking about the food. I apologize. But, um, it was amazing. In each of my areas, I was able to meet a ton of new people and, um, and all of my companions, we had so much fun and all the missionaries, all the elders and all the other sisters in my mission. Um, it was me and I think there were seven other hermanas, there were seven other, um, Spanish speaking sisters and it was really cool to learn Spanish and I'm still learning. I don't have it down perfect, but it was really cool to, um, be humbled in that way and learn what it's like to learn a new, learn a new language and how it is to, to adapt to a new culture. And it was, um, just a great experience to see, um, how other people's lives are and, how humble, how, how different their situations are. I met a lot of people that had a lot of humble situations where a lot of them were coming from Venezuela, um, where things aren't so good right now. And so we got to meet a lot of them and just help them out and, um, try and give them as much faith and, and strength as they could through, through the savior and through teaching them. And it was really cool to see them grow and see how their faith increased as they continued to learn and continued wanting to take the lessons from us. Um, I think one of the hardest things on my mission was just, or for my mission was probably just getting used to, um, the responsibility that it is. Um, I, it's kind of hard, you know, as a missionary, you want to find new people to teach and you want people to have this gospel. And so it's hard to, um, put so much to give, put so much faith in the Lord that he'll provide somebody for you and he'll provide somebody that's ready. And so it was really it was really cool to see over time since I started my mission and towards the end how I started trusting more in the Lord and how um, I had to be directed by the Spirit to go certain places and to do certain things. And um, it was a great way to 
see that the Lord truly does trust us and he wants each one of us to be missionaries without the plaque or not and without the plaque or with it and it was so cool just to see how members were missionaries in my wards and how they would meet somebody that had great potential and they're like okay we need the missionaries to teach them and so we would meet them and be able to talk to them and so it was it was amazing to see um how missionary work can can influence the lives of many people um it was it was amazing um and i think the part that i think strengthened my testimony the most was watching people as they took the lessons as they started listening from us and as they questioned they had different questions and and asked us you know if these things are true i think the coolest thing was being able to see how they individually prayed and asked our heavenly father if the things that we were teaching were true and when they got an answer and um i was able to see quite a few people get baptized over my mission and I think one of my favorite stories, um, I think I told this story to some of the youth um, last week, but it was really cool. We had, there's a couple, Nora and Raphael, they were 78 and 79 at the time, so they were older. And me and my companion, we were out knocking in this one area called Lake Reams, and we were out knocking, and we knocked on somebody's door, and she was a Portuguese woman. She was from Brazil spoke perfect English so we were able to talk to her but turned out that she had a sister um that was a member of the church in Brazil and so we called up the elders that spoke Portuguese and we're like hey you need to come and talk to this lady and try and teach her and so they're like cool sounds good and then 10 minutes later they called us back and we're like hey Ramonas we found this guy named Raphael and he seems really interested and really cool so you guys need to teach them and so we went and met them, and Nora was his wife, and they were the cutest little Venezuelan couple. They were just these little old, cute, I loved them. I love them. But, um, and so we ended up teaching them for about a month and a half, I think, and by the end of it, um, Nora and Raphael were baptized. And it was the coolest thing, because at the same time we were teaching Nora and Raphael, the elders were teaching Tatiana and the Brazilian woman that we found. And it's amazing because that same weekend that Nora and Raphael were baptized, Tatiana was baptized. And so it was, that was probably the biggest miracle that I saw in my mission was how when we were obedient and we did the things that we were told, um, the Lord provide, provided us somebody to teach and then the Lord provided somebody else for the elders to teach. And so it was a really cool experience. And, um, and it was kind of, it was sad because in this last August, um, Raphael passed away. He had some heart conditions and, um, it was really sad, but it was, it's amazing to see how the plan of salvation and how this message that the gospel is restored and that through baptism, the first ordinance, we can truly enter the kingdom of God. And so it's really cool to think that because he had enough faith and because he wanted to learn more, he has been saved because he did that, that first ordinance. And, um, on my mission, I learned a lot of patience as well as my parents and my sisters can easily tell you, I've never been patient, never, ever been patient. But it was interesting because every single companion that I had, one of the main things that they said, one of the main qualities that they liked about me was that I had patience. And so every time I told my parents that, they were like, um, I don't think so, that can't be right. But, um, and so I was able to learn a lot of patience because it takes a lot of time when you're teaching someone and it takes a lot of time for them to understand some of these things and <clears throat> sometimes it's a long process for them to actually accept it but it was really cool to to see that when i had that patience that the miracles came faster and so when i trusted in the lord more the things happened and um i think the i think my mission strengthened my testimony in many ways but in the most it helped me the, in the biggest ways that I saw is when I saw people accepting this message and how this knowledge completely changes their idea of things and how they understand that why wouldn't God send us a prophet? Why wouldn't he send us somebody that res could restore a church so that we could come back to him? And so it was really cool for me to see how there's a lot of people that were in those that mist of darkness that didn't know exactly what to do. And, and they found this message. They found the light. And they were introduced to it. And so I think serving my mission and seeing other people recognize the truthfulness of this 
gospel. <coughs> Sorry. Help me realize that this is the true gospel. And I'm so grateful for the time that I had and for the ability that I had to serve others and <coughs> and trust in them and, and trust in the Lord and all that he has planned for us. And I'm very grateful for my Savior and for the sacrifice that he made and it was it was easy giving up a year and my half a year and a half of my life to sacrifice a year and a half of my life to serve the Lord and serve Him and and help be, and try to be more like Him because Jesus Christ is our is our Savior and He is the best example for us on who we should be and how we can enjoy life and how we should serve others and so it was really cool to it was amazing to be a representative of Him and to try my best to be more like Him. I'm very grateful for his example and for the love that he has for me and for each one of us. And I'm very grateful to be back and that I will be able to keep doing missionary work and keep sharing this gospel with others. Um, and I hope that I will be able to see you all soon so I can give you all big hugs and just share more fun mission experiences. But I love you all and um, I'd like to end with my testimony that I know Joseph Smith restored this gospel and um, that he... Um, was able to translate the Book of Mormon for us and that we can read that and have it as another testament um, of Jesus Christ. I'm very grateful for our prophet, Russell and Nelson, and that we're able to um, receive revelation from him and, and help from him. And I know that Jesus Christ is our Savior and we can continue relying on him and his gospel. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.